so I have just reached the 89,500 word mark on my first novel, yay! Um, which I'm calling Project King for now. It's kind of the working title because my character is called Miles King and I kind of know what I want the title of the book to be but I'm not going to reveal it until I know for sure which will be at least after I finish the first draft and maybe even later than that I just need to really see if it, if it works. And the way that I'm doing the I guess the pacing of the time because the novel is based around a central character. I mean it's a complete work of fiction but it is set in Auckland which is where I'm from where I grew up and we pick up in the 60s which I was not around for <laughs> but that's where we meet the character and then uh, we keep jumping ahead a few years at a time. Sometimes we spend a bit more time in a particular year or a particular um, snapshot in time sometimes we jump ahead quite quickly. So I've just written, I guess, the main event. I guess in some ways it's the climax of the story, kind of a, a peak point of the story. So we are in, currently in 1988. Say hi. <laughs> My book is divided into separate parts. Um, because I'm already, I've already got a lot of chapters, so the parts are divided up by the years. And so whenever I start a new part, it kind of feels like I'm starting all over again and I have to set the scene of where the character is at and all the other characters in the story. And I know what needs to happen, but I have to sort of plant the seeds to uh, make all of these things come together to create these events and so on. So I'm usually pretty slow at that stage and then eventually it starts to pick up and I, it builds momentum and I start to get quicker and quicker and then I get really excited and get a whole lot of writing done and then I jump ahead a few years and I feel like I'm back to square one again. So I already have the story outlined, like I know what needs to happen, it's just really a matter of kind of fleshing it all out and yeah, I mean things change as I go as well. But overall, I know where I want the story to go. It's just a matter of really spending the time to get the words down. That's why I am typing very slowly and spending more time thinking than writing. I'm also spending a bit of time doing research because I kind of need to know um, what events happened around that time that might actually impact households, have an impact on the economy, for example, the, the share market crash of 1987, I mean, now it's 1988 and it's got to have some kind of impact, um, it will, on a certain aspect of the story. So uh, without actually writing in that event as such, I just need to have that in the back of my mind that's just kind of part of the environment that they're in at that time frame. Also, the fact I'm a, not a very fast typer, I can't really touch type, but the, I kind of type at the same pace as my own brain comes up with the ideas, so it works, it works. And that's where I'm at right now. So, I kind of figured that if I'm going to bring in any details, factual details, into my story, because it is based in reality, and even though the story is fiction, you know, there are some details that are true. I figured that I should at least try and make sure that my details are accurate and fact check and so on. For example, I needed to know what was on TV on a Friday night at 7.30 um, in 1984, <laughs> and so I was like, Mum, what was on TV on Friday night at 7.30 in 1984 and of course she couldn't remember even though she's got a good memory she's like mm, I got nothing I can't confirm I tried to google as much as I could looking up like TV listings um, from the listener which was the publication that we had back then that had the TV guide in it I keep finding Thursday but that wasn't helping me at first I thought it was EastEnders but then it turned out I was looking at 1986 not 1984 and it didn't come out till later I figured it might be Coronation Street but I just needed to check so I emailed the listener archive and they were really helpful they came back to me a few days later maybe like a week later and um, sent me an actual scan of the TV listings from 1984. Super helpful. August 1984 and on Friday night, Channel 1, 7.30, Coronation Street, Q. 
Ken Barlow has discovered Mike Baldwin's secret plan to open a wine bar and disco at the old Rosman Street warehouse near the Rover's Return. So that was really helpful, just for that one small detail, but hey, at least I know it's accurate. I started this novel in October of last year, which was 2018. So it is now mid-September of 2019. And I'd never written anything like this before, never, never even attempted to write a novel. So every stage of this process basically has been a milestone for me. Even just the first 5,000 words was like, whoa, that's the most I've ever written in my life in one go. And then the first 25,000, first 50,000 and so on. And now I'm approaching 90,000 words. I kind of always thought that the novel would be around the 80,000 word mark and it may still be, I'm not sure, and I won't really know until I finish the first draft and then I can decide how well it flows and see what needs to be pared back, refined, any events that kind of weren't really, um, didn't really add much to the story or weren't totally necessary. I, I can only really think of a couple of things that I could possibly take out, but I, I don't want to lose any of the continuity or the um, the pacing of the story either, because it does take place over the entire lifespan of my character, which is a little unique, I guess. So there's a lot that needs to happen. Anyway, I'll, I'll decide that later. <laughs> I basically outlined the entire story really when the first idea came to me and I actually started planning it out. So I've always had a general idea of the entire picture of what uh, the major events are and how the character develops. Of course it has changed a lot as I've gone along but the, the general skeleton, the bones of the book um, are still there. Yeah, it's quite interesting the things that have changed or um, some seeds I've planted that I didn't even really know were going to be important later. <laughs> they were just kind of anecdotal things that all sort of came together. So I have been using the app Ulysses, which has been really helpful for my writing because it's um, over such a long time span, I have divided the story into chapters, um, but the chapters all fall within separate parts and each part is in a different year or time span. Um, so Ulysses has been really good at helping to manage all of that content, all these, um, it's basically sheets and each, each sheet for me is a chapter, but it's also been good to have a I guess like an organized um, file system of um, all the research. I've had to do so much research partly because of the time frame um, and it was a long time before I was born. <laughs> so I've had to do a lot of research around that. Also, a lot of the themes of the book is not necessarily something that I really knew much about. <laughs> a lot of the things that, that my character does in his life are not things I actually know firsthand. So I'm trying to create these firsthand experiences um, that are not from my personal experience. <laughs> uh, so that's been really interesting. I feel like I've had to spend just as much time in research as I have actually writing, maybe more so actually. And then also there are some creative projects which are really complicated as well. My character is a mechanical engineer and so I've had to learn a lot about that and um, what is actually plausible, reasonable in the time um, period uh, with the re resources available and yeah, try to keep it all as um, legitimate, as accurate as possible, as realistic as possible, but also with a bit of creative flair. The other thing I was going to say is that um, I have this really cool writing desk. I got it from an antique store years ago. I just kind of liked it. It's a Scott character. And I mean, it's not exactly the most ideal workspace, I guess. I mean, I do have a proper workspace for my graphic design work that I do, um, which is in another room. Uh, but I quite like having this little writing nook that's cute and quaint and this, um, it's really rickety. It's like creaky, but I don't know, it works. It's just really cute. All of my writing is done on the computer. I've just written a few notes by hand 
for little reminders that I will come back to later. There's, I don't know, I guess it's that whole tactile thing of um, actually getting things down on paper as well. So, I mean, I kind of have, uh, yay, all of these random ideas. So I kind of try to avoid that by actually putting my ideas filed neatly in Ulysses so that I have, you know, like 1981, these are all the things that are related to that year and these are the ideas I have for that time period and this is what I want to happen and so on. But then some things just kind of have to happen on paper. So yeah, that's, sometimes I just, like it's like words I like or phrases or things that just pop into my head, um, things I need to remind myself of later or, oh my goodness. Um, but also I've been like doing a creative endeavor in the story and I've had to sort of really plan it out figuratively walk through and describe the scene hopefully the reader will be able to visualize what I'm explaining because I can't look at it objectively once I have the idea it's already in your head it's when you know that Daniel Radcliffe is playing Harry Potter, when you read the books, you just visualize Daniel Radcliffe because he is Harry Potter in your mind. It's what you've, um, how you relate those, the image to the words. Um, so then it's really hard to step out of that and read it again for the first time. So um, when I do a lot of the research, um, I'm pulling down images from Google or whatever. <sighs> lots from the internet um, so I'm storing them all in neat little organized folders kind of I mean I've tried my best but there's a lot of research that's gone into this yeah.